Now, let's see for the first time uh, in this course that basically we have to deal with three kinds of intermediates in this course. They are cations. Cations are those intermediates which have incomplete octet and have a plus charge. Suppose there is a bond between A and B. Now I broke this bond heterolytically. That means I put both the electron of this bond into the orbital of B so that the orbital of A became empty and A was deprived of one electron. So A is losing one electron but the proton in the nucleus is not lost to compensate for the charge. So A will have plus one unit of charge that means A will have an excess of one proton. On the other hand B will have an electron from the outer source that means there was two electron in this bond one was from A the other one was of B. But while breaking the bond both the electrons went into the orbital of B that means B also have one electron of A but in the nucleus the proton number didn't increase. So the electrons are in excess in A and there is a one electron excess there so B will have a negative charge. This species which is having plus charge is called cation and this species which is having negative charge is called anion. If carbon is having plus charge then we call it cargo cation and if carbon is having negative charge then we call it carb anion. There is one more intermediate that frequently will deal with that is free radical. Now suppose this bond between A and B we broke homolytically that means while breaking the bond we gave one electron to each atom. We are using single headed arrow. The single headed arrow is used for the movement of one electron. Here we used double headed arrow referring the movement of two electron. Now if you have homolytic fission then A will have one electron and B will have one electron. These kind of species which have one unpaired electron these are called free radicals. They are called radicals and free because they are free for reactions or they are very very active for reactions. So generally they are termed as free radicals. Now the point here is cations are electron deficient. Anion has electron excess and free radicals are also electron deficient. Cations are deficient of two electrons. Free radicals are deficient of one electron. And anions are ele have electron excess of one electron. Now these are the three common intermediates. We have more intermediates like nitrine and carbene which we will be dealing with later in this course. But um, to start with, we will be starting with the study of these three kind of intermediates. Intermediates means they are formed between reactants and products for short period of time. Now let's move on to study the stability of these intermediates. You have to bear for some time. You have to just concentrate on what we are telling you. Try to understand it and don't think about why at all we are studying this and what application this will have in due course of time. Let's try to understand. Okay, suppose I have an atom. Suppose this is chloromethane and I broke this bond heterolytically. I gave both the electrons to chlorine. So chlorine will have a negative charge. This will come out as chloride ion and a methyl carbocation will be developed. Now suppose instead of this I have chloroethane. 
then if I do hectolytic fission here, I'll develop this carbocation and chloride ion. Now if I have to compare this rate of reaction between reaction 1 and reaction 2, then rate of reaction will be higher for the one which is having more stable intermediate. Intermediate means these unstable species which are formed between the reaction. This cannot be the final product because final product will always be a neutral stable compound. This will be the intermediate and further reaction will be carried out on these intermediates. Now if I am somehow able to compare the stability between these two intermediates then I can also tell which reaction will have a higher rate. Now in order to compare the stability of these intermediates let's look at these two. Here this carbon is devoid of two electron. This carbon is also devoid of two electron. Here there is no other bond of this carbon from which it can extract electron and somehow fulfill its deficiency. But here you have this CC bond. This carbon is sp3 hybridized. This carbon is sp2 hybridized and by now we know very well that this has percentage as character 25%, this has percentage as character 33%. This carbon is more electronegative so as we know the electron will shift towards more electronegative atoms so electron will be shifting towards a carbon which is having plus charge. So if electron density moves towards the orbital of this electron deficient carbon then electron deficiency of this carbon is somehow mitigated. So there is a stabilizing effect of this carbocation and you don't have any such stabilizing effect here. So we can conclude from this that this intermediate is more stable than this intermediate. The immediate conclusion drawn out of this would be that second reaction will have a higher rate than the first reaction because in the second reaction the intermediate form is more stable. So this is one of the application of inductive effect where you look for the stability of intermediates. Because as we look, as we'll be going ahead, we'll, we'll get to know this, we'll have a greater clarity into this. Okay? If you have a stable intermediate, the rate of reaction is more. Similarly, let's take another example. Suppose I am being given Three, in, three intermediates. These all three are carb anions and they are termed as 1, 2 and 3. Now they are asking me to compare their stability. Now uh, as I can see in all three are carb anions, all three has excess of negative charge. The first thing that we have to keep in mind is neutral atoms are stable whether you have plus charge or you have negative charge they both are unstable for stability you have to move these intermediates to its neutrality plus charge has to be made neutral and negatively charged atom as well has to be made neutral now if this is having excess of charge then minus i effect will stabilize these anions because minus i effect will pull electron away from this negative charged atom so the negative charge density on these atoms will decrease it will move towards neutrality and this will stabilize the intermediates now as such all three atoms are electronegative so all will pull electrons all will decrease the electronic density on these carbon atoms But the one which is having higher inductive effect, the one which is having greater tendency to pull up the electron will stabilize, will have a greater stabilizing effect. Now this pulling is purely based upon electronegativity and we know very well that fluorine is the most electronegative element in the periodic table. And among these two you have chlorine and then after bromine. So the pulling, the extent of pulling up the electron will be highest in the first case. So if you, tr if you like to know the stabilizing order or if you know, if you want to like, if you like to know the stabilizing or the stability order. The stability order will be first intermediate will be most stable followed by second and followed by third because in the first case you have highest electronegative highest electronegative atom that is having highest inductive effect that's it